This is the world's most lightweight wood. You can easily carry such a large log on your shoulder, and it might weigh from 25 to 35 pounds, depending on how dry it is. This remarkable lightweightness makes it an extremely useful in the manufacturing of aerial, naval, and various other types of products. It is the balsa tree, which primarily thrives in the region spanning from southern Mexico to Bolivia. Ecuador is the country where balsa production grew significantly. The country made historical exports of balsa wood in 2020. It reached $519 million. This is remembered as the balsa fever. It led to the illicit trade of balsa wood. As a result, the balsa tree began to disappear from Ecuador. The Chinese companies were aggressively demanding more and more balsa. The prices went up so much that many U.S. companies had to find other alternatives to fulfill what balsa wood provides. The following year, the COVID-19 pandemic began to disrupt international trade. As a result, the exploitation of this precious tree was partially halted, and environmentalists began to pay attention to Ecuador. But why did the Chinese so desperately buy 77% of Ecuador's basla in 2020? The reason is its use in the manufacturing of wind farm blades. The actual glass fiber reinforced plastic making up the, uh, the shell of the blade on each side, and that's sandwiching a balsa wood. Balsa wood is used as a sandwich composite material in wind blades. It provides structural strength while not adding too much weight. Moreover, it is cheaper than any metal and more resistant than plastic, making this wood ideal for wind blades. In 2006, China had just 2.6 gigawatts of installed capacity. By 2019, the country had increased its installed capacity to 236 gigawatts. At the end of 2020, China's President Xi Jinping announced plans to reach 1,200 gigawatts of wind and solar capacity by 2030. So far, China has installed wind farms, producing 339 gigawatts. While this puts China significantly ahead of the rest of the world, it comes at the expense of balsa wood. 381-meter wind blades typically contain a total of six tons of balsa, which is equivalent to 40 trees. The problem is that you can cut down hundreds of trees in a single day, but one tree takes years to grow. Luckily, the balsa tree grows faster, but still, it takes five to seven years. However, some companies ensure that the balsa trade remains sustainable. One of those companies is 3A Composites. This company is the world's largest balsa wood supplier, managing thousands of hectares to plant and grow balsa in Ecuador. With the help of local experts, they search for the best seed that could yield maximum timber in the least amount of time. Here, a worker is preparing soil, which will be put into a nursery pot to sow balsa. This machine automatically and accurately places one seed in every pot. The germination of basla starts very quickly, and within the first week, the sown seed develops into a new baby plant. It is nurtured in the nursery for the next seven weeks before being replanted as a seedling. After removing debris and loosening the soil, the balsa plant is planted into the soil. In one year, this plant will reach a height of 40 feet. In two years, it will be 60 feet high. It will be 79 feet tall in the third year and 13 feet higher the following year. In the fifth year, it will grow 95 feet tall and have a trunk diameter of approximately 12 inches. It is important to note that responsible companies like 3A only harvest selective trees, and they usually plant more trees, typically double the number of harvested trees. Conversely, the timber mafia engages in the reckless felling of trees in order to maximize their profits. This leads to forest depletion, which is a major concern. Hence, the responsibility falls on the customer companies to make sure they buy the legal balsa wood. The harvested tree is then cut into manageable logs. The skin is also removed before loading them onto trucks. Then the logs go to the sawmill. There, 
Each log is measured and sorted according to its size. Next, workers use sawmills to transform them into the desired size and shape. A stock of wood is placed in a kiln. This is called artificial seasoning, which significantly reduces the amount of water in the wood. The treated basla wood blocks are further furnished by cutting to a specific length and sanding their surface. Some coatings are also applied to provide a protective finish. Additionally, methyl bromide is applied to protect it from pests. Now that it is prepared, they will weigh it again because it is one of the rarest types of wood. Let's look at the fascinating method of manufacturing a wind farm blade and how balsa is incorporated in it. But first, it is important to understand the types of balsa as it plays an important role for the specific use. Balsa can be divided into three types based on its grain patterns, the A grain, the B grain, and the C grain. Interestingly, the grain direction actually controls the rigidity or flexibility of a balsa sheet more than its density does. The B grain is considered best for wind farms and many other products because it possesses some qualities of A grain and some qualities of C grain. Wind farm blades are constructed in a mold of the desired shape and size. First of all, continuous straps of fiberglass are laid in the mold. It can be done manually by expert hands or by automated machines. Next, they install the cylindrical root section. This section connects the blade to the turbine. Then a laser-guided system mounts prefabricated spar caps. It's now time to install the pre-kitted foam and balsa core. Next, the fiberglass is laid once more on top of the balsa. The leading edge flange molds are ready for shell assembly. Now it's time to fill it with something that can bind everything together. For this purpose, epoxy resin is used. It saturates the material. Vacuum bags are also used in this infusion process to prevent any vacuum pockets in the structure. The shear webs are installed to reinforce the structure. The cable is also integrated to protect against lightning. Lastly, both halves of a wind blade are combined. Any extra part is trimmed off and the blade is painted white so it remains heat resistant and visible to aviators. A 130-foot-long rotor blade typically weighs around 26 tons. It contains approximately 24 tons glass fiber reinforced plastic, 1.3 tons balsa wood, and 0.5 tons metal. But the question is, is it worth falling down such precious Amazonian trees to produce wind energy from them? Furthermore, these blades are prone to catching fire and frequently turn into dust when struck by lightning. There are serious questions that demand answers. But first, we will introduce you to the process of manufacturing some other amazing products where balsa plays a significant role. Decades ago, Ecuador's balsa was used for another excellent purpose. Because of its lightweight and strong mechanical properties, this wood has been employed in the manufacturing of airplanes. It's two skins of plywood with an insulation of softer wood between. De Havilland, the maker of the DH-98 Mosquito, used the same sandwich technique to build this famous British multi-role aircraft. The fuselage, or main oval section, was built in two vertically separate halves with Ecuadorian balsa. They then sandwiched the balsa with plywood. This airplane played an important role in the Second World War. Nowadays, some aircraft enthusiasts use balsa wood to create RC aircraft. Marco Roulade is one of them. He has some advanced cutting machines in his workshop, which significantly reduces his workload. Here, Marco dismantles two carbon arrows to construct an aircraft's fuselage. While this process is time-consuming, many people find enjoyment in his time-lapse videos.
Finally, the RC airplane is ready, but will it fly? Let's see. The lightweight nature of balsa is not the only quality that makes it special. Its incredible buoyancy makes it suitable for floating vehicles. Look at this large raft. To build these two large rafts, a total of 44 balsa logs were used. The purpose of these rafts was to recreate the Contiki expedition of 1947, which traveled from Peru to Easter Island and then returned to South America within a span of five months. By design, a raft is the simplest version of any floating vehicle and also perfect to test the buoyancy of any material in the heavy splashing water. Surfboard makers are well-versed in balsa buoyancy, but Varuna Surf, an Indonesian company, took a different approach. Instead of purchasing the balsa wood from Americas, they decided to introduce this tree in Indonesia. Because Indonesia is also a part of a tropical region, the environment is ideal for the growth of trees like balsa. They chose a deforested area to grow balsa and waited four years until their first crop reached maturity. Giving free seedlings to local communities helped them a lot, and now each nursery grows up to 50,000 trees a year. They select mature balsa trees, but only use 10% of the wood based on density. The remaining 90% wood is used to manufacture wind turbines. Varuna Surf gives more than 40 hours for finishing their surfboard. Different craftmasters employ different approaches, but in general, it is the same process for building hollow wooden surfboards. Let's see what they do. First of all, they use a CNC machine to make components for the surfboard. These machines follow computer instruction and accurately cut the wood according to the design. Once the CNC cut components are ready, the master craftsman assembles them with excellent care. Then, they join two or more planks with a consistent thickness. To prevent any accidental damage and work conveniently, they fix the assembled structure in devices called jig holds. Here, the craftsman fills the gap between the joined planks to give them a uniform look. Let's mark it for trimming to the desired shape. Then, the bottom wood is joined with the assembled structure. After that, it is left in that condition to dry for some time. Now it's time to complete the remaining parts, which include the nose of the surfboard at the front and the tail at the rear side. It takes a lot of manual and machine trimming to achieve the best results. Likewise, the deck is crafted and combined. However, many boat and yacht makers use balsa to build the hull in a similar fashion to how rotor blades are made the hull for the cruiser's yachts. 39 Express Coupe is currently being built. The hull bottom is made of basla wood, but both sides are coated with fiberglass layers. Now they are injecting resin that will create a solid bond once cured. It took just 25 minutes to fill the combining liquid and, overall, four days to make this hull. Whether it's the hull of a yacht or a rotor blade, a significant amount of balsa wood is wasted due to its expiration. Take a wind blade. For example, its service life is around 10 to 25 years. The world's first modern wind farm was erected in New Hampshire, US in 1980. From the year 2000 onwards, various nations began to install wind farms. This means a number of wind blades will be decommissioned in the coming days. It has already started in the US. The country pulled down up to 8,000 wind farm blades in 2021, and most of them were then landfilled. By 2050, the cumulative mass of decommissioned wind blades will reach 43 million tons in the US alone. Imagine how much wind farm waste China would produce, which is the largest producer of wind farms. To solve this problem, several companies and startups came up with innovative reuse of those expired wind blades. Canvas, an Ohio-based startup, transforms expired wind farm blades into public furniture. This approach addresses the challenge of recycling balsa, fiberglass, and other core materials that are traditionally disposed of in landfills. Artists are invited to collaborate with Canvas to craft beautiful furniture. 
this appealing furniture will last for more than 20 years. Transforming blades into furniture isn't the only way to conserve balsa. The traditional method of recycling massive amounts of balsa is to shred the material through a primary, secondary, and tertiary shredder. The shredded material is then processed through a fiber separator to separate out fiberglass. Then, balsa then passes through a flotation tank. It starts floating on the material, while other materials sink into the water. Now we have obtained 90% of pure balsa wood. This hydraulic press can be used to make pallets, and it does that by applying 1.5 tons of force to the shredded balsa. The pallet can be used for both packaging and insulation. On the one hand, some companies are concerned about reusing wind farm waste wood. On the other hand, some companies are interested in utilizing wood more extensively. Modvian, a Swedish company, offers wind farms made out of laminated veneer wood. Veneer can be made of any wood, including balsa. The wood logs are peeled off to make sheets of veneer. To make these curved modules, Modvion uses veneer sheets peeled from Scandinavian spruce. Modvion has so far constructed a tower that stands at 344 feet tall. The company says that because the thick walls are made of highly dense wood, these towers are better than the thin steel towers. In comparison to steel towers, they are also less costly. Also, mining ores and forging them into the desired tower releases a significant amount of carbon. To build a 360-foot tall steel wind turbine tower, around 1,250 tons of CO2 are released. Conversely, veneer is not only less expensive, but it also significantly reduces carbon emissions. Modvion claims that 90% less carbon is emitted during the construction of their tower. But what about the fire? On average, each wind turbine experiences one lightning strike per year, and it causes 60% of blade losses. The blades often ignite and burn out like firewood. This happens because composites like balsa wood, fiberglass, and resin are highly flammable. Making a tower out of wood would increase the risk of catching fire. Indeed, it would be just as challenging to ignite a solid log. These logs do not burn easily because of the highly dense wood. The decommissioned tower will be reused in conventional buildings and several other applications. This is why Modvion is optimistic about capturing 10% of the global market. In 10 years, our objective is to have 10% of the global market putting out more than 2,000 towers each year. Regarding the illegal trade of balsa and other timber from Amazon, the responsibility lies on the buyer to buy it from a legal supplier. Governments must work together to monitor the situation and take appropriate measures. After all, these trees are not just wood. They are the lungs of our planet. We take weeks to make informative videos like these. It is a daunting task. If you find it useful, subscribe to our channel. We will see you next time.